Today I'm going to build a headboard for a queen size bed. I've made a cut list and a drawing and I'll put both of these on my website so if you'd like to build this project with the video and the drawings you should really have no problem. Just go to johnpeters.com and search headboard. The first step is to make this section right here and you can see that I've made a drawing. So right now I'm going to cut three pieces that are three inches by ten and a half. The headboard is basically designed around a face frame and it's just dressed up a little bit with some molding. Now I've already cut the styles, now I'm going to cut the top rail and the bottom rail. I'm going to use the biscuit joiner to assemble the face frame so I've laid it out on my workbench so I can mark it with reference lines. and then line up the indication mark on the biscuit joiner with the reference line. Well now I'm ready to assemble the face frame, but I'm gonna hold off a minute because the way I'm going to attach the face frame to the legs is by screwing through the styles. So before I assemble the face frame, I'm going to pre-drill two holes through the styles. I've drawn a line down the center of the style and then I'll measure in two and a quarter inches on each side and that'll give me enough room when I attach the face frame to the legs with the screw gun. To make sure I drill through the center, I'm going to start the hole with my drill press. And then I'll finish the hole with an extra long bit in the cordless drill. Well, after drilling through the styles, I've also added a countersink. Now I'm ready to assemble the face frame. I've just finished clamping up the frame. I'm going to let it set up for about an hour and a half, and then I'll come back and I can work with it. Well, it's been a little bit more than two hours, so I'm going to unclamp the face frame and give it a quick sanding before I attach it to the legs. Well, now that the face frame is sanded, the next step is to cut the legs. And I'm cutting the leg material out of a 2x8 that I bought. Now, you're probably not going to be able to find this at a home store. You're going to have to look for a good lumber yard, a retail lumber shop. And so basically a 2 by 8 measures exactly an inch and three quarters by seven and a quarter inches. One more thing I forgot to mention is the wood that I'm using is described as S4S, which stands for surfaced on four sides. And I'll often buy material that way just because it's, it makes the project a little Quicker. You don't have to run it through the thickness planer or through the joiner. Now also the species that I'm using is poplar and I'll often use poplar if the project that I'm making is going to be painted because poplar has a nice tight grain. There's rarely any knots and also it's in the hardwood family but it's not hard like a maple. Uh, I would say it's somewhere between a pine and a maple so it's really easy to work with. I want the face frame to sit back a half of an inch from the front of the leg. So I'm going to use a piece of half inch plywood and just hold it flush with the front of the leg and then just trace a line. I'm also attaching the frame to the legs by toe screwing through the top and the bottom. And a little trick to getting the hole started and going the way you want it to go is to just get the drill bit started and then slowly change your angle.
Now that the face frame is where I want it on the leg, I'm going to pre-drill with the same long drill bit before I attach the frame to the leg with a four inch long deck screw. And a two inch long screw for the toe at the top and the bottom. Okay, well now that the face frame is attached to the legs, I'm going to add the panel or the back. That's gonna create the flat panel in the center. And for that, I'm using half inch plywood. I'm gonna use a jig to cross cut the piece of plywood. And this jig is designed specifically for my circular saw. And if you'd like to know more about this jig and how to make it, I'll put a link on the screen. I've cut the half inch perch ply with the size. I gave it a light sanding and pre-drilled holes so I can attach it to the back of the face frame with a little glue and one inch screws. Well, I flipped the headboard over, and now I'm just taking a minute to remove any wood glue before it sets up, and then I can start trimming out the inside of the flat panels. The molding that I'm going to use on the inside of the flat panels doesn't quite cover the holes in the sides of the styles. So I'm gonna fill those, and while that, the fill is setting up, I'll move on to the top of the headboard. This is what I was talking about, how the, see how the molding doesn't quite cover the hole? So I'll just fill that with a little bit of ready patch. And then by the time I finish the top, it should be dry and I can start putting the molding around the flat panels. Before I attach the top to the headboard, I'm gonna use the router to put a slight round over on the bottom edge. I'll use a little wood glue, an inch and a half long nails and the nail gun to attach the top. And I just wanna make sure that the top of the headboard is flush with the back of the leg. Well, now that I've attached the top, the next step is to run a piece of crown along the top and around the leg. And ironically enough, this piece of molding is actually referred to as bed molding. The cutoff is the piece that I'll need to carry the molding around the leg. Well, I called it a day yesterday after running the crown around the top of the headboard. And I've come in today and I've already finished picture framing the one side of the headboard, and I'm about to start on the next side. But before I do, I thought I should mention that the molding I'm using is a small base cap molding. And the reason why the molding is white and so is the bed molding at the crown here is because I purchased the molding as a pre-primed finger joint pine. And you can find that at any home store or lumber yard.
The next step is to dress up the bottom of the headboard and for that I'm going to use the same base cap molding as I did on the flat panels. And just be sure to line the bottom of the base cap molding flush with the bottom of the face frame. I've drawn a pencil line square across the leg and when I run the base cap around the leg, I'll keep the bottom of the base cap at that line. Well, that's about all there is to it and you know that's why a job like this is so much fun there's no drawers or doors and those are really the things that make woodworking projects uh, a little complicated uh, this I'm just sort of having fun playing with the moldings now again if you got anything out of the video please give me a thumbs up or subscribe or you can like me on Facebook and if you want to build this headboard go to johnpeters.com and I'll make sure to have these drawings up and I'll describe the moldings that I used in those drawings uh, also, if you want to see how the headboard looks finished, uh, I'll put a link as soon as I have a video done on that, which uh, basically describes how I'm going to paint the headboard and how I install it. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you next time.